Lewis Carroll's Alice's Looking Glass Adventures, an audio play by Edison Theatre Company of Thomas A. Edison High School. Chapter 1 Alice Enters the Looking Glass Kingdom Alice in Wonderland A fairy story of the 19th century A bit of a gossamer flimsy A fantasy for children Alice is a fairy story Peopled with human beings Animals that talk like men Do they mirror men who act like animals? We shall see This is a simple story about a little girl who dreams a wondrous world, conjures strange creatures and even stranger people. For all these years, half the world has called it childish nonsense, the other half, social satire. But it has always been simply Alice's adventures in Wonderland and what she found on the other side of the looking glass. Strange that you mentioned the looking glass. That is a long forgotten term for a mirror. In our own time, we stare at a glass, or screen, of a different sort. Sometimes too much, I fear. But into this new form of looking glass, we ask you to focus now. We will guide you into the past, to a kindly, imaginative gentleman, spending a lazy Sunday afternoon with his two nieces. One is smart. Too smart, perhaps and very grounded. She loves history, reading books, and thinking of the practical aspects of being a teenager. We shall call her Daphne. The other, Daphne's younger sister, is more mercurial, a dreamer, and inquisitive about many things, but nothing is more important to Alice than her vivid imagination, and their uncle Lewis adores both of them. On this long Sunday afternoon, so many years ago, in a comfortable country house, Mr. Carroll is setting up a chess set while Daphne tries to read. Alice is watching both her sister and her uncle, restless as usual. boring book and play with me. You're too young to appreciate history, Alice. One day you will leave behind games and fairy stories. I rather like games, and I much prefer my stories over your dusty old books. Go away, please. Let me read. Oh, you two. Always squabbling. That's a funny game, Uncle. What did you do then? A red pawn took a white pawn this way. You see, Alice, the chessboard is divided into 64 squares, red and white, and the white army tries to win, and the red army tries to win. It's like a battle. With soldiers? Yes. Here are the kings and queens they are fighting for. That's the red queen, and here's the white queen. How funny they look. See the crowns on their heads, and look at their big feet. It's a foot apiece. That's what it is. Do they hump along like this? Here, you're spoiling the game. I must keep them all in their right squares. I want to be a queen. Here you are, and here you are in your little stiff skirt. How do you do, Alice? And now you are going to move here. Let me move myself. Do leave Uncle alone. Your endless chatter. Leave her be, Daphne. She's curious. When you have traveled all along the board this way and haven't been taken by the enemy, you may be a queen. Why do people always play with kings and queens? Mother has them in her playing cards, too. Look! Sister, put down the book and play with me. Do stop rattling about. I want to finish my book before we have tea, and I will do it somewhere else, if you'll excuse me. Here's the king of hearts, and here's his wife. She's the queen of hearts. Isn't she cross-looking? Wants to bite one's head off. You're playing against yourself, aren't you? It's one way of keeping in practice. But if you play against yourself, 
I should think you'd want to cheat. Does a nice little girl like you cheat when she plays against herself? Oh, I never do. I've schooled myself hard. I always pretend I'm two people too. It's lots of fun, isn't it? Sometimes, when I'm all alone, I walk up to the looking glass and talk to the other Alice. She's so silly, she can't do anything by herself. She just mocks me all the time. When I laugh, she laughs. When I point my finger at her, she points her finger at me. And when I stick my tongue out at her, she sticks her tongue out at me. I'll have to write a book someday about Alice. Alice in Wonderland, child of the pure, unclouded brow and dreaming eyes of wonder. Or Alice and what she found through the looking glass. Don't you wish sometimes you could go into the looking glass house? See? There's the room you can see through the glass. It's just the same as our living room here, only the things go the other way. I can see all of it, all but just what's behind the fireplace. Oh, I do wish I could see what lies beyond. I want so much to know if they have a fire there. You can never tell, you know, unless our fire smokes. Then smoke comes up in that room too, but that just may be to look as if they've had a fire, just to pretend they've had. The books are something like our books, only the words go the wrong way. Won't there ever be any way of our getting through, Uncle? Oh, I imagine you will find a way. Sleep on it, little Alice. I am dreadfully tired. I chased the cat round and round today after she found Daphne's knitting and chased the ball all over the garden where sister was playing croquet with the neighbors. And I ran and ran after the naughty little thing until I was all out of breath and so tired. Hmm. So tired. Take a nap. You have time before tea. We're gonna have mock turtle soup for supper. I heard Mama tell the cook not to pepper it. Too much. Too, too much pepper. Sweet dreams, Alice. Dream of your looking glass playtime. As Alice drifts off to sleep, thoughts of what was on the other side of the looking glass house began dancing in her head. Shadowy figures come closer to where Alice is sleeping, peeking through to have a glance at the curious little girl. As they come closer to the glass, we see two majestic figures, queens looking remarkably like life-size versions from her uncle's chess game. There she is. Let's call her over. Do you think she'll come? I'll call softly. Alice! Psst! Alice! Alice! Hush! If she wakes and catches us. Alice, Alice come, come through. through. Join, Join us, us in the looking, looking glass, glass house. house. I don't know how. Alice, come through. Come Join us in the looking glass house. house. Join us in the looking Alice, glass house. Come through. Through. Join us in the looking glass house. It's turning into a sort of a mist. Why, it's easy to get through. Why? Why? I'm going through. Alice found herself on the other side of the looking glass house, a situation she had pondered and imagined, but never ever thought would be possible. At least, it all seemed real, like dreams often do when we are in the middle of them. Dream or not, Alice found herself in what appeared to be a reverse of her own house. Except the floor was like her uncle's chessboard. Instead of small chess pieces, now Alice spotted a queen in the flesh. Instead of fear and awe, Alice faced this regal presence with a sense of wonderment. Why, you're the Red Queen. Of course I am. Where do you come from and where are you going? Look up, speak nicely, and don't twiddle your fingers. I only wanted to see what the looking glass was like. 
Perhaps I've lost my way. I don't know what you mean by your way. All the ways about here belong to me. Cut to while you're thinking what to say. It saves time. I'll try it when I go home. The next time, I'm a little late for dinner. It's time for you to answer now. Open your mouth a little wider when you speak, and always say, Your Majesty. I suppose you don't want to lose your name, do you? No, indeed. And yet, I don't know. Only think how convenient it would be if you could manage to go home without it. For instance, if the governess wanted to call you to your lessons, she would call out, Come here! And then she would have to leave off, because there wouldn't be any more for her to call. And of course, you wouldn't have to go, you know. That would never do, I'm sure. The governess would never think of excusing me from lessons for that. If she couldn't remember my name, she'd call me Miss, as the servants do. Well, if she said Miss, and didn't say anything more, of course you'd miss your lessons. I dare say you can't even read this book. It's all in some language I don't know. Why, it's a looking glass book, of course. And if I hold it up to a glass, the words will go all the right way again. Jabberwocky, twas brillig and the slithy, slithy toves, did gyre and gimble in the wave. All mimsy were the borogoves, and mom wraths outgrave. It seems very pretty, but it's rather hard to understand. Somehow it seems to fill my head with ideas, only I don't exactly know what they are. I dare say you don't know your geography either. Look at the map. It's marked out to be like a big chessboard. I wouldn't mind being a pawn, though of course I should like to be a red queen best. That's easily managed. When you get to the eighth square, you'll be a queen. It's a huge game of chess that's being played all over the world. Come on, we've got to run. Faster. Don't try to talk. I can't. Faster. Faster. Are we nearly there? Nearly there? Well, we passed it ten minutes ago. Faster. You may rest a little now. Why, I do believe we're in the same place. Everything's just as it was. Why, of course it is. Would you have it any other way? Well, in our country, you'd usually, you generally get to somewhere else if you ran very fast for a long time, as we've been doing. A slow sort of country. Now here, you see, it takes all the running you can do to keep in the same place. If you want to get somewhere else, you must run at least twice as fast as that. I'd rather not try. Please, I'm quite content to stay here. Suit yourself. I'll just take the measurements. At the end of two yards, I shall give you your directions. First quenched, I hope. At the end of three yards, I shall repeat them, for fear of your forgetting them. At the end of four, I shall say goodbye. And at the end of five, I shall go. That square belongs to Humpty Dumpty. And that square to the griffin and mock turtle. And that square to the queen of hearts. But you made no remark. I, I didn't know I had to make one, just then. You should have said, it's extremely kind of you to tell me all this. However, we'll suppose you said it. Four, goodbye, bye. Alice was surprised at the Red Queen's sudden disappearance, but not as surprised as to see a new figure entering the looking glass room. Dressed impeccably, a white rabbit, the size of a person, rushed in. Whether it was part of her dream or as a matter of course, Alice just accepted that large white rabbits talk. And soon after she encounters the white rabbit, a new royal personage makes an entrance. The Duchess! Oh, won't she be savage if I've kept her waiting? Oh, I'm very glad I happened to be in the way. Red and butter, red and butter! <gasps> Am I addressing the White Queen? Well, yes, if you call that a dressing, it isn't my notion of a thing at all. If your majesty will only tell me the right way to begin, I'll do it as well as I can. But I don't want it done at all. I've been addressing myself for the last two hours. 
Every single thing's crooked, and you're all over pins. The brush has got entangled in it, and I lost the comb yesterday. You look better now, but you should have a lady's maid. I'll take you. I'm sure I'll take you with pleasure. Two pence a week and jam every other day. <laughs> I don't want you to hire me, and I don't care for jam. It's very good jam. Well, I don't want any today, at any rate. You couldn't have it if you did want it. The rule is jam today and jam yesterday, but never jam today. Eventually, it makes sense that it is jam today. No, it can't. It's jam every other day. Today isn't any other day, you know. I don't understand you. It's dreadfully confusing. That's the effect of living backwards. It always makes one a little giddy at first. Living backwards? I never heard of such a thing. But there's one advantage in it, that one's memory works both ways. I'm sure mine only works one way. I can't remember things before they happen. It's a poor sort of memory that only works backwards. What sort of things do you remember best? Oh, things that happened the week after next. For instance now, there's the King's Messenger. He's in prison being punished, and the trial doesn't even begin till next Wednesday. And of course, the crime comes last of all. Suppose he never commits the crime. That would be all the better, wouldn't it? Of course, it would be all the better. But wouldn't it be all the better his being punished? You're wrong there. At any rate, were you ever punished? Only for faults. And you were all the better for it, I know. Yes, but then I had done the things I was punished for. That makes all the difference. But if you hadn't done them, that would have been better still. Better and better and better. There's a mistake there somewhere. Oh! Oh, oh! My finger's bleeding! Oh, oh, oh! What is the matter? Have you pricked your finger? I haven't pricked it yet, but I soon shall. Oh, oh, oh! When do you expect to do it? When I fashion my shawl again, the brooch will come undone directly. Oh, oh! Take care, you're holding it all crooked. That accounts for the bleeding, you see. Now you understand the way things happen here. But why don't you scream now? Why, I've done all the screaming already. What would be the good of having it all over again? Oh, it's time to run if you want to stay in the same place. Come on. No, not so fast. I'm getting dizzy. Faster, faster. Everything's black before my eyes. Faster! Faster! I can't. Please stop. Then you can't stay in the same place. I shall drop you behind. Goodbye! Oh, dear. In the darkness, Alice felt herself moving, maybe falling, with the wind rushing by. It was so disorienting not to know where she would land or end up. If this was a dream, perhaps she would wake up soon. If this was real, heaven help her to find out what comes next. dear, oh dear. I've never been smaller than any table before. I've always been able to reach the knobs. What a curious feeling. Oh, I'm shrinking. It's the fan, the gloves. Oh, saved in time. But I never, never... Oh, um, my, 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 my fan and gloves. Where are my fan and gloves? Oh, Mr. Rabbit, please help me out. I want to go home. I want to go home. Oh, the Duchess. Oh, my fur and whiskers shall get me executed, as sure as ferrets are ferrets. Oh, oh, you have them. I'm sorry. You dropped them. You, know. you shall chop off your head. If you please, sir, where am I? Won't you please tell me how to get out? I want to get out. Oh, my ears and whiskers. Look how late it's getting. It's a rabbit hole. I'm small enough to fit it, too. If I shrink any more, it might end in my going out altogether like a candle. 
I wonder what I would be like then. What does the flame of a candle look like after the candle is blown out? I've never seen such a thing. Don't stand chattering to yourself like that, but tell me your name and your business. My name is Alice, but... It's a stupid name enough. What does it mean? Must a name mean something? Of course it must. My name means a shape I am, and a good, handsome shape it is too. With a name like yours, you might be any shape almost. You're Humpty Dumpty, just like an egg. It is very provoking to be called an egg. Very. I said you looked like an egg, sir. And some eggs are very pretty, you know. Some people have no more sense than a baby. Why do you sit here all alone? Why, because there's nobody with me. Did you think I did not know the answer to that? Ask me another. Don't you think you'd be safer down on the ground? The wall is so very narrow. What tremendously easy riddles you ask. Of course I don't think so. Take a good look at me. I am one who has spoken to a king. I am. To show you I am not proud, you may shake hands with me. However, this conversation is going on a little too fast. Let's go back to the last remark but one. I'm afraid I can't remember it. In that case, we can start fresh, and it's my turn to choose a subject. You talk about it as if it were just a game. So, here's a question for you. How did you say you were? Seven years and six months. Wrong. You never said a word about it. Now, if you'd asked my advice, I'd had said, leave off at seven, but... I never ask advice about growing. Too proud? What a beautiful belt you've got on. At least, a beautiful cravat. I should have said. No, a belt. I mean, I beg your pardon. If only I knew which was neck and which was waist. It is a most provoking thing when a person does not know a cravat from a belt. I know, it's very ignorant of me. It's a cravat, child, and a beautiful one, as you say. There's glory for you. I don't know what you mean by glory. When I use a word, it means just what I choose it to mean, neither more nor less. The question is whether you can make words mean different things. The question is, which is to be, master? That's all. Impenetrability. That's what I say. Would you tell me, please, what that means? I meant by impenetrability that we've had enough of that subject, and it would be just as well if you'd mention what you mean to do next, as I suppose you don't mean to stop here all the rest of your life. That's a great deal to make one word mean. When I make a word do a lot of work like that, I always pay it extra. Oh. Ah, you should see them come round me of a Saturday night for to get their wages, you know? That's all. Goodbye. Goodbye. Till we meet again. I shouldn't know you again. If we did meet, you're so exactly like the other people. The face is what one goes by, generally. That's just what I complain of. Your face is the same as every, everybody has. The two eyes, so nose in the middle, mouth under, it's always the same. Now, if you had the two eyes on the same side of the nose, for instance, or the mouth at the top, that would be of some help. It wouldn't look nice. Goodbye. Oh, I forgot how to ask him to... Poor Alice. So many strange beings, such adventures she's already faced in this wonderland in which she finds herself. It was almost too much to take. So she reached up to try a doorknob, but it was locked. Then another, and it was locked as well. It seems all the doors were locked up tight, and she had no way out of this lonely place. What was the curious child to do? For now, she <coughs> wept. Alice found the tears flowed and flowed until they came out in buckets and started filling up the room, until suddenly she was once again plunged into the darkness and found herself floating on a river of her own tears. Passing her in the darkness of the churning waters, a bottle floated by. And not just any bottle, mind you, but one that glowed. 
even though she felt it was not always in her best interest to drink from bottles glowing with a green light, it caught her eye because the words on the bottle also shined through the darkness. Drink me, the bottle said in shiny green letters. The color was not appealing, but she thought it was not marked with a skull and crossbones, and judging from her current watery plate, what could it hurt to take a swig of the verdant liquid? So, drink it she did, and what happened next was the most remarkable thing to happen to her thus far, including meeting two queens, a talking rabbit, and a surly egg. You have been listening to Chapter One of Edison Theatre Company's audio play, Alice's Looking Glass Adventures, based on the beloved books by Lewis Carroll. Our play was adapted from a play by Alice Gerstenberg in the public domain. Mr. Jeff Walker adapted, directed, and produced the audio play. Featured in Chapter One were Meredith Andres and Aaron Flick as the narrators, Mackenzie Waddell as Alice, Emma Devlin as Daphne, Sean Smith as Lewis Carroll, and through the looking glass and into Wonderland, Uma Karunkaran as the Red Queen, Kaylee St. John as the White Queen, Siona Shishak as the White Rabbit, and Avery Boyd was Humpty Dumpty. Be sure to join us for Chapter 2, Alice Meets the Mock Turtle and the Griffin with many more adventures in Wonderland to come. This has been a production of Edison High School Theatre. Lewis Carroll's Alice's Looking Glass Adventures, an audio play by Edison Theatre Company of Thomas A. Edison High School. Chapter 2, Alice on the Beach and Meeting the Griffin and Mock Turtle. Stuck in a deluge of her own making, a sea of tears caused by her own sadness. Alice had grabbed a bottle floating by her that glowed green with a clear message, Drink Me. After meeting talking animals and imperious queens, Alice thought she could do no worse than sample the bottle's contents, especially if it would help her out of this watery predicament. So Alice quickly uncorked the bottle and gulped down the contents. Then something remarkable happened. Alice grew. She could see herself growing, like a telescope expanding to its full length to see far into the horizon. Her limbs and torso stretched and stretched until she was back to her full height, just as she washed up on a shore with a sandy beach. Wet, bedraggled, and disoriented, Alice rises from the salty water and surveys her new surroundings. stars. I nearly drowned in what must have been a sea of my own tears. I do wish I could find myself home. It must be very close to supper now, and I've certainly missed tea time. I do love the seaside. Mother, father, and uncle promised they would take Daphne and me to the shore again. I wish they were here with me. <laughs> Hello? Mister, uh, I don't know what to call either of you. Alice's fellow beachcombers are two unusual creatures, which is saying something grand for this wonderland. First, there was a larger than usual tortoise. Or was it a turtle? Alice had seen one before, surely, but never one this size. The additional creature was something Alice thought she had seen in a fairy tale, but she wasn't sure. It was huge, it was green, but not like the green glowing bottle from her river of tears. This was a darker green, and it had wings. This was the first griffin she had ever met. In fact, it was also the first mock turtle she would meet too. 
but how she wished these two would stop weeping, especially the turtle, who seemed to be on the verge of dying. tears into the sea with his he sobs as if he had a bone in his throat he sighs as if his, as if his heart would break what is his sorrow <laughs> oh griffin it's terrible <laughs> <laughs> this young lady she she wants to know your history <laughs> I'll, I'll tell it to her. Sit down, both of you, and don't speak a word till I'm finished. I don't see how you can ever finish if you don't begin. Once, I was a real turtle. <laughs> when we were little, we went to school in the sea. The master was an old turtle. We used to call him Tortoise. Why did you call him Tortoise, if he wasn't one? Well, we called him Tortoise because he taught us. Really, you are very dull. Yes, we went to school in the sea, though you mayn't believe it. I never said I didn't. <laughs> you did! We had the best of educations. In fact, we went to school every day. I've been to school every day, every day, too. You needn't be so proud of that. With extras? Yes, we learned French and music. And washing? Certainly not. Ah, then yours wasn't really a good school. Not like ours. Our regular lessons were very good. Like what? Really good rhyming, of course, to begin with. And then the different branches of arithmetic, ambition, distraction, uglification, and derision. <laughs> I never heard of uglification. What is never it? Never heard of uglifying? You know what to beautify is, I suppose. Yes, it means to make anything prettier. Well then, if you don't know what to uglify is, you are a simpleton. What else had you to learn? Well, there was mystery. Mystery, ancient and modern, with geography. Then drawling. The drawling master was an old codger eel that used to come once a week. What he taught us was drawling, stretching, and painting in coils. What was that like? Well, I can't show it to you myself. I'm too stiff. <laughs> And Griffin never learned it. Had the time I went to the classical master, though. He was an old crab, he was. I never went to him. He taught laughing and grief, they used to say. So he did. So he did. And how many hours a day did you do lessons? Ten hours the first day, nine the next, and so on. What a curious plan! That's the reason they're called lessons, because they lessen from day to day. Then the eleventh day must have been a holiday. <laughs> of course it was! And how did you manage on the twelfth? That's enough about lessons. Uh, tell us something about the games now. <sighs> Same as if he had a bone in his throat. <laughs> you may not have lived much under the sea. I haven't. And perhaps you were never even introduced to a lobster. I once tasted one at a dinner, but I hadn't been introduced. So you can have no idea what a delightful thing a lobster quadrile is. No, indeed. What sort of a dance is it? Why, you first form a line along the seashore. Two lions, seals, turtles, salmon, and so on. 
Then, when you've cleared all the jellyfish out of the way... That generally takes some time. You advance twice. Each with a lobster as a partner. Of course. Advance twice, set to partners. Change lobster... Then, you, you know, you, you, you throw the, the you lobsters... The lobsters! As far out to sea as you can. Swim after them. Turn a somersault in the sea. Change lobsters again. Back to land again, and that's all for the first figure. It must be a very pretty dance. Could you demonstrate it for me? With pleasure, but we have no jellyfish, and we're all, all out of lobsters, so it won't work! <laughs> Thank you, just the same. Perhaps you can show me when you get more lobsters. <laughs> yes. Then we can dance the lobster quadrille once again. Do you know about the whiting? The fish? Of course, ninny girl. What other kind of whiting do you know about? Do you know why it's called the whiting? I never thought about it. Why? It does the boots and shoes. Does the boots and shoes? Whatever do you mean? Why... Why... What are your shoes done with? I mean, what makes them so shiny? They're done with black shoe polish, I believe. Blacking, they call it. Boots and shoes under the sea are done with whiting. Now you know. And what are they made of? Soles and eels, of course. Any shrimp could have told you that. If I'd been the whiting, I'd have said to the porpoise, Keep back, please. We don't want you with us. They were obliged to have him with them. No wise fish would go anywhere without a porpoise. Wouldn't it really? Of course not. Why, if a fish came to me and told me he was going on a journey, I should say, with what porpoise? Don't you mean purpose? I mean what I say. Would you like the mock turtle to recite for you? Oh, yes, please. If the mock turtle would be so kind. Um... No accounting for tastes. Give her turtle soup, will you, old fellow? <sighs> Beautiful soup, so rich and green, waiting in a hot tureen. For who such dainties would not stoop? Soup of me, ding, ding, Soup of me, ding, beautiful soup. Beautiful soup, beautiful soup. Soup of me, ding, beautiful, beautiful soup. <laughs> <laughs> Check. They won't let her stay in our square. The queen is coming this way. She'll chop off our heads. Come on, come on, let's fly. What shall I do? Uh, up the hill and down the hill and into the overgrown garden. You'll be safe in the March Hare's garden and just in time for tea. <laughs> As Alice looked after the griffin and mock turtle and their rapid disappearance, she followed the white rabbit's directions, nearly exhausted but drier. After her time on the beach, Alice ran up and down the hills, hoping she would see something like a garden. Her adventures in this wonderland had only begun. You have been listening to Chapter 2 of Edison Theatre Company's audio play, Alice's Looking Glass Adventures, based on the beloved books by Lewis Carroll. 
Our play was adapted from a play in the public domain by Alice Gerstenberg. Mr. Jeff Walker adapted, directed, and produced this audio play. Featured in Chapter 2 were Ainsley McClure and Natalie Laclede as the narrators, Mackenzie Waddell as Alice, and Through the Looking Glass and Into Wonderland, Siona Shishak as the White Rabbit, Samantha Verde as the Mock Turtle, and Sam French as the Griffin. Be sure to join us for Chapter 3. Alice attends the Mad Tea Party, meets the Duchess, and plays croquet with the King and Queen of Hearts, with many more adventures in Wonderland to come. This has been a production of Edison High School Theatre.